Today I'd like you to turn to um, chapter 7. We're going to talk today about some special discrete distributions, um, some discrete probability distributions. Now the first distribution that we want to talk about is our binomial distribution. Now there's two parameters that we deal with when we talk about a binomial distribution. The capital B basically represents that our distribution is binomial and we're going to find out that Ann represents the number of fixed trials and P is going to represent the probability of success, success attached to um, our binomial experiment. So let's first of all begin with uh, um, um, some of your notes here and talk about the binomial distribution. Now in a binomial distribution each trial results in one of two mutually exclusive outcomes. Either we get a success or we have a failure. So once again, when we're dealing with distributions that are binomial, there's really only two outcomes. Either we have a success or we have a failure. And these outcomes are mutually exclusive from one another. So if I were to draw a Venn diagram, uh, basically we would have separated circles here. These are mutually exclusive events. Now there are a fixed number of trials. And that's what n represents in the binom binomial formula. We do have a fixed number of trials n. So um, we're looking at a, a certain number of successes out of a fixed number of trials. Okay, so once again, we have success or failure, and there's a fixed number of trials. Now, the outcomes of different trials are independent of one another. So, uh, knowing what occurred earlier as, as an outcome and one of the earlier outcomes, it's not going to affect the outcome of uh, future results. So, every uh, trial that we conduct in a binomial experiment are independent of one another. Okay, not only are they independent of one another, but the probability that a trial results in a success is the same for all trials. And that's what the P stands for. P represents the probability of success. So regardless of our trial number, the, the success rate is basically the same for every single trial that we conduct in a binomial um, experiment. So once again, we have uh, two mutually exclusive outcomes, a success or a failure. There's a fixed number of trials. We call that N. The outcomes of different trials are independent of one another. They're not affected by each other or what occurred earlier. The probability that a trial results in success is the same for all trials. So the binomial random variable X is defined as the number of successes out of the fixed number N. Okay, so we're going to let X be number of successes and that's how we define our random variable and um, this random variable x is going to be defined as the number of successes out of the fixed number n. <clears throat> so these are basically um, um, the definitions of a binomial distribution and what's required for a, um, a, a random variable to be binomially, binomially distributed. So um, uh, we're going to take a look at a couple examples. Um, here to, to determine whether um, the experiment conducted was binomial or whether it's not a binomial distribution. So are these binomial distributions? Okay, we're going to toss a coin 10 times and we're going to count the number of heads. Okay, so if I think about the definition of a binomial distribution as we talked about earlier, does each trial result in one of two mutually exclusive outcomes? Is there a success? Is there a failure? Well, we're going to count the number of heads, so we're going to consider um, a toss of a head being a success, therefore a toss of a tail would be a failure. So we do have our success, we do have our failure, and each of these results um, are mutually exclusive. Now, is there a fixed number of trials? In this case, there's 10 times we flip a coin. So the number of trials here is 10. Are the outcomes of different trials independent? Okay, flipping a coin ten times, it doesn't matter what I flip the first six, seven times, okay? The result of the eighth one will be independent of all the previous ones. So, yes, each toss of a coin will be independent from one another. And the last thing that's required is the probability of success the same for all trials. And indeed, in this case, yes, the probability of success is the same for each one of our trials. So, the answer here is yes. 
So this is indeed a binomial distribution. And because it is a binomial distribution, um, we can, uh, uh, one thing I do want you to do when discussing binomial distributions is go ahead and talk about your random variable. Okay, x represents basically um, the number of heads uh, that we achieve in uh, n equals uh, 10 tosses of a coin. Okay, and now I can continue a little bit further and say that uh, x is binomially distributed with two parameters, parameters here, n equals number of trials, which is 10, and P represents the probability of, of success for each particular trial. So I would like you to get used to defining your random variables and probability questions. And I would also like you to, uh, to describe the random variable X in terms of its distribution. Remember, the tilde symbol basically means that it has this particular distribution. And we don't really need to spell out binomial. We could put the capital B there uh, to represent that we know that this is a binomial distribution. Okay, so once again, um, the answer to one here is yes. Okay, let's go to the second example here. Okay, we're going to deal 10 cards from a shuffled deck, and then we're going to count the number of red cards. Okay, now, um, if I go through the steps on what's required for a binomial distribution, once again, does each trial result in one of two mutually exclusive outcomes, a success or a failure? And in this case, it does. Either I'm going to get a red card or I'm going to get a black card. So we're going to define the probability of success as being uh, us getting a red card and the chance of a failure being getting a black card. Are there a fixed number of trials? Indeed, there are. There's 10. There's 10 trials. Okay, so let's go down to the next requirement. The next requirement says outcomes of different trials are independent. Now, let's think about this very carefully. Okay, if I'm dealing out one card, okay, and let's say I've already taken out a red card, okay, is the outcome of my uh, next trial going to be independent, or is it dependent on what just happened? And if you think about cards, and we're dealing these things without replacement back into the deck, then there's a dependency established there. And even if we go down to the uh, fourth criteria, is the probability of success the same for all trials? It's not going to be. Okay, when we do things without replacement, our probabilities continually change depending on what previously happened. So we have both a, a dependency there and our probability of success is not the same for each individual trial. So is this a binomial distribution? this is not a binomial distribution because the probability does not remain constant. Okay, what about number three? Two parents with genes for O and A blood types. Um, they have O and A blood types and we want to count the number of children with type, uh, blood type O. Now once again, I can define um, each trial here as two mutually exclusive outcomes. Either um, I have a success, I have type O blood, or I have a failure, I don't have type O blood. Okay, do we have a fixed number of trials? Well, I don't see anywhere where there's a fixed number of trials. So we're not measuring number of successes out of a particular, a particular fixed number. So this does not qualify for a binomial distribution either. So in this case, no, there's not a fixed number of trials that we're looking at. So we have to be very careful about defining binomial distributions and make sure the criteria is uh, acceptable for each particular uh, experiment here. Now let's go back to a binomial distribution here. Here I want to toss three coins and count the number of heads. Okay, now we've done this example earlier. Um, we took a look at the, uh, the discrete distribution here for tossing three coins and, um, and getting the number of heads. And we want to find this discrete probability distribution. Okay, so once again, um, we have x representing our random variable, which is, which is x is equal to the number of heads um, that we achieve when tossing three coins. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write this up here as a binomial distribution. So x represents number of heads, okay, number of fixed trials, n is 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Toss, a three, toss three coins and count the number of heads. 
Okay. So once again, we have a binomial distribution here uh, where X is the number of heads that occur on uh, uh, three coins that are tossed. So M basically represents the number of trials, and the number of trials here is three. Okay. And the possible outcome um, for getting a head on, on a flip of three coins um, is going to be either zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. And we looked at this at last lesson and described the distribution here. Um, the, the distribution here basically, um, if I change back from my pin here, the distribution, um, the probability distribution here, uh, the chance that we're going to get zero heads is one eighth. Uh, exactly one head is uh, three eighths. Uh, exactly two heads is three eighths. And exactly three heads is uh, uh, all three heads is one eighth. And remember, that sums up to one. <coughs> but that is a uh, that is our probability distribution, and this is a special probability distribution because it's binomial. Now, out of three coins that are tossed, what is the probability of getting exactly two heads? Okay, so uh, once again, if I go back here to my probability statement, um, or, or, or defining my variable, okay, we know that x is binomial with parameter n equals three, and probability of success equals one half. So I want the probability here that the number of heads x, which has this binomial distribution, is uh, equal to, in this case, um, equal to two. I want the chance that x is equal to two. And I can look that up in my um, table right here. The chance that x is equal to two is going to be three eighths. Okay, so this particular probability, once again, is 3 eighths according to my probability distribution. Okay, this leads us to the binomial formula. Okay, now the binomial formula basically um, gives us uh, a, a, a pretty quick, easy way to develop a probability instead of having to complete um, an entire probability distribution chart. Now, the probability that x, our random variable x, is equal to k successes is equal to n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. Now, uh, we defined combinations earlier when we talked about our fundamental principles of counting um, in our counting chapter. Uh, we defined it as n c k down here. And, oops, I accidentally thought I was on my pen. Okay, so we define this as NCK here. Let me go ahead and erase, um, erase some of this up here. Now, NCK basically can be written uh, uh, in these, uh, uh, as, as N choose K in a set of uh, uh, closed parentheses here. Now, one thing that I do like to do, um, in, instead of, um, you know, I, I do prefer this notation here for writing combinations. But um, I prefer to write Q uh, instead of 1 minus P. P represents basically um, the probability of success. And Q basically represents to me the probability of failure, which is really the complement. Um, and that's why we call it 1 minus P. Um, but it's easier for me to write that notation. This is how you'll see me write it in class. P to the K, Q to the N minus K. Okay, once again, um, our combination n choose k, um, n choose k, once again, is equal to um, n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Okay, so don't, don't forget that. <clears throat> okay, but this is, the, uh, this is the formula that we're going to be using um, for binomial distributions, okay? Here, we're going to assume that x is binomial with parameter n and p. Okay, and represents the number of fixed trials here. So this is number of trials. Okay, if my pen will continue writing for me here. Number of trials. Okay, K represents number of successes that we're looking at. Okay, P represents the probability of success. Okay, and here Q represents the probability of failure right there. Okay, 
So let's use our binomial formula now and try to determine um, the answer to this next question. Okay, so out of three coins that are tossed, what's the probability of getting exactly two hits? Now we found the answer to be three eighths with our um, probability distribution table that we set forth. But let's go ahead now and use the binomial distribution formula to calculate this here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my pen here. And first of all, the, the thing that I first want to do is I want to define my random variable x. Okay, x basically is going to be uh, equal to the number of heads that we get. Okay, and recall that x could take on uh, four values. I could get zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads, or and that's it. So zero through three. Now, after I've defined my random variable, okay, I forgot my a there. Okay, after I define my random variable, I want to define my probability distribution and how my random variable is associated with that. So my random variable x is a binomial distribution, and it's a binomial distribution with parameter n and this number of fixed trials. Okay, we're tossing this coin three times. And P represents the probability of success, and the probability of success here is 0.5. Okay, now, after I've defined my random variable, I've defined my probability distribution, the next thing I want to do is I want to write a probability statement. So, once again, we've defined our random variable, we've defined the distribution, and the third thing that I want to do is define my probability statement. What do I want the probability of? I want the probability that my random variable x, number of heads, is equal to 2. Okay? Now I'm ready to begin the, the evaluation of my probability, but as we go into geometric distributions, Poisson distributions, normal distributions, I would like you to go through this three-step process just to organize your work, uh, define your random variable, describe its distribution, and, and then the thirdly, I want you to write the probability statement. Okay, now I'm going to be uh, able to calculate here the probability um, that x is equal to 2, okay? Okay, once again, we're going to use our probability formula, okay? So we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, do n choose k times p to the k times q to the n minus k, okay? Where, in this case, um, n is equal to number of fixed trials 3, K is equal to the number of successes that we want to achieve. In this case, it's 2. And P, the probability of success, is 0.5. So we're basically going to plug those parameters in here based on our probability um, scenario. So uh, I basically have uh, three trials, and I want two successes. And this is going to give me the total number of arrangements on how I can get uh, two heads out of three tosses of a coin. Okay, remember, getting two heads on three tosses of a coin basically is a combination. Okay, and I have to consider all the scenarios, okay? So we could get um, head, head, tail. We could get head, tail, head. And we could get tail, head, head. So there's three ways to do this. In other words, I have three slots that I want that I have available to me, and I want to shuffle two H's around those three slots. And this is a combination here, okay? Um, the, the, order is, um, the order is important. So the probability of success of tossing ahead, once again, was 0.5, okay? And how many successes do I want? I want two, okay? I want two heads, so that makes sense to take one half times one half to get that. And the probability of failure, which is the complement of P, is one half as well. One minus one half is still one half. And if I take n minus k, I get 3 minus 2 or 1. So here's two successes right here. This represents two successes. And this right here represents one failure. Okay, so we define success as being a head and a failure as being a tail. So now we just need to evaluate this probability. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and uh, erase some of this down here so I can... Uh, make some more room to do my calculation. We've already defined this here, so I can get rid of all this here. But let me go ahead now and make my, um, make my calculation here. So um, 3 choose 2, once again, is 3 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 minus 2 factorial. Okay, that's going to be 3. Okay, if I take 1 half squared times 1 half to the first power, okay, that's just 1 half to the third power, which is 1 eighth. 
So basically, if we take uh, 3 times 1 eighth, we're going to get <coughs> this probability now, according to the binomial distribution, um, is equal to 3 eighths. Okay, so once again, uh, we looked at this. We don't have to calculate the entire uh, uh, probability distribution itself. We can do this through the binomial formula. Now let's take a look at the next example. The number of inaccurate gauges in a group of four is a binomial random variable. If the probability of a defect is 0.1, what is the probability that only one is defective? Okay, now let's go ahead and begin uh, by defining our random variable. Okay, we're going to let x be equal to, in this case, uh, this problem is all about defective gauges. Okay, so I want to let x be the number of um, inaccurate, oops, that's one in, um, inaccurate gauges. Okay, and that's the first thing I want to do is define my random variable. Okay, the next thing I want to do is define its distribution. Okay, they tell us that x is binomial, number of inaccurate gauges is binomial. Okay, the parameters, number of fixed trials here, uh, we have four. Uh, gauges that we're looking at, so n equals 4, and the probability of success, this case of a gauge being inaccurate or defective, is 0.1. Okay, and the third statement is I want to write my probability. What do I want the probability of? I want the probability that x, the number of inaccurate gauges, is exactly 1. Okay, so I can use my binomial formula now to calculate this, okay? So we're going to use an n choose k, where n represents the number of fixed trials, which is 4. k basically represents the number of successes that we want. <clears throat> okay, we want one gauge, exactly one gauge, to be defective. Okay, we're going to multiply by p, which is the probability of success, in this case that a gauge is inaccurate. And I want one of those gauges to be inaccurate. <clears throat> And then I'm going to multiply by the probability of a failure. Okay, a failure is defined in this case as a gauge being accurate. Okay, and that's going to be the complement of uh, a gauge being inaccurate or defective. And how many of those do I want? I want three of those. Notice that the exponents here will always add up to um, the number of fixed trials. So I want one inaccurate gauge, I want three accurate gauges, and there's four choose one arrangements of, of placing one inaccurate gauge across four different slots. Now the rest of this I can compete with my calculator, okay? And um, once we do that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at what that uh, result is. Um, the chance of it having exactly one gauge being inaccurate is 0.2916. Now they went to four places. You only need to go to three. Make sure you at least go to three places, 0.29. 2 uh, is the probability of having exactly one defective or inaccurate. Now the second part of this question asks us, um, what's the chance that more than one is defective? Okay, so um, I want to go back to, um, I want to go back to my pin here, and I'm going to go ahead and erase what I currently had above. Um, so let's take a look at this solution here. Uh, I want the probability that x, the number of defective gauges, happens to be more than 1. Now, if we think about the entire probability distribution here, x and p of x, okay? Now, the only outcomes we can have, since we have four gauges, there's a chance that none of them are defective, exactly 1 is, which we already calculated above, uh, perhaps 2 are, perhaps 3 are, or maybe all four are actually defective. So. Um, I would have to consider this as my entire probability distribution, and if I wanted the chance that I have more than one defective gauge, then I'm going to have to take a look at uh, the sum of these three individual probabilities here. So the chance that x is greater than 1 is really equal to the probability that x equals 2, or I could have exactly three defective gauges, or we could actually have all four gauges being defective. So this will require me to do three individual binomial probabilities and sum them up. Now, uh, if we think about probability distributions, remember, it always sums to one. So it might be more uh, advantageous for us to take a look at the complement of this event. The probability that x is greater than one is equivalent to the probability that x is less than or equal to one. Okay, if I take the complement of that event. 
Okay, so since I know that the red square and the... So I could certainly, let's go right back to my pen here. Um, once again, I could certainly calculate the probability here um, of x equals zero uh, plus the probability that x equals one and then subtract that, um, subtract that value uh, from one. And that might be a little bit easier, okay? So um, I can really just calculate two probabilities to come up with this particular answer instead of three probabilities. So that might make my work a little bit easier. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this and let's just go to the answer right here. Um, if we were to calculate this, okay, let me go back one more. Okay, so if we were to calculate this here, the chance that x is greater than one is one minus the probability that I have no defective or plus the probability that I have exactly one defective. <clears throat> and since I've already done one defective up here, okay, which is 0.2916, I'm only um, actually need to require, <coughs> only required to calculate the probability that I have no defective. In other words, they're, that they're all good. Okay, so the total chance that x is greater than one is one minus that sum, which is 0 0.0523. So not a very good chance that I have more than one defective um, gauge here in this, in this problem. Okay, now let's talk about how we can calculate binomial probabilities with our calculator, okay? Calculator is a, a very easy way to calculate binomial probabilities. And let's take a look at the syntax that's required when doing a, a binomial uh, calculation. So a binomial PDF um, basically is on your calculator. And basically you're required to put in the two parameters of your binomial distribution with X, the number of successes that you want to achieve. So uh, once again, um, what, what goes into the calculator, and it has to go in this particular order, um, you need to put in your number of fixed trials. You need to put in P, that's the probability of success, okay, whatever it may be, okay? And X is gonna basically represent the number of successes. Um, that you're looking at in your probability uh, statement. So uh, once again, n number of fixed trials, p is a uh, probability of, of a success, and x is the number of successes. Okay, so this calculates the probability of a single um, binomial probability x equals k. So if I go back to my earlier statement, um, we knew that um, x in this case was um, number of defective gauges, okay, and uh, x was binomially distributed with parameter n equals um, 4, and the probability of defective gauge was, okay, this is probably why my pen isn't writing, my battery is low here, okay, the probability of defective gauge was 0.1, and I want the probability that x was equal to 1. Okay, so in calculator syntax here, this becomes a, a binomial PDF. Now, the PDF stands for probability distribution function. Okay, we're gonna use a PDF when we're calculating the probability of exactly one, six, one uh, a certain number of successes occurring. Okay, we're not doing an accumulation or anything yet, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. So, I'm gonna put my parameters in here. Okay, number of fixed trials is four, okay? Probability of success is 0.1, and I want exactly one success. Okay, so I need to place that on my calculator, and um, let me go ahead and jump to my calculator now and, and plug that in. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to bring up my calculator here. Okay, and bringing up my calculator. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to this, right above the variables is your distribution key. So I'm gonna to go to second distribution. And notice there's all sorts of distributions here. And I'm gonna to toggle down to the second page. And we're gonna select the binomial PDF. Okay, this is gonna give us the binomial probability. Okay, the number of trials once again was four. I want, ex um, the, the probability of success here was 0.1 and I want exactly one success here. So notice that I can do the binomial PDF and it calculates that for me 
and it's it's a very nice convenient packaged way of, of coming up with a binomial okay, so that was very convenient for us to do and uh, let's go ahead now and take a look at a binomial CDF now this is even more powerful because as we looked at in the previous example when I try to try to when I wanted to find um, the probability that I have more than um, more than one defective gauge um, I had to accumulate some different probabilities. Now a binomial CDF is different from a binomial PDF in that this is an accumulation of probabilities. But we have to be very careful because I'm, I'm accumulating from um, zero up to a certain number of successes that I want. So a binomial CDF basically carries the same parameters here and is number of fixed trials, P is the probability of success, and X is going to represent the value I want to accumulate up to. So this calculates the cumulative probabilities from probability that X equals zero all the way to the probability that X equals K. So if I go back to my previous example here, um, in, in the previous example, and I'm going to go ahead and um, um, erase this information here. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and squeeze it in over here. I wanted the probability that X was greater than one. And remember, x was uh, binomial with parameters n equals 4 and p equals 0.1. Okay, so the chance that x is greater than 1. Now, I would have to sum up um, x equals 2 plus x equals 3 plus x equals 4. Okay, now I'm kind of sliding this in here. You probably can't read it too well. But um, my calculator will not start uh, my accumulation at x equals 2. So I need to consider the complement of this event, which is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Okay? And that's going to be 1 minus the probability that x equals 0 or the chance that I have exactly one defective gauge. So in this case, I'm going to have to do a 1 minus binomial CDF and I'm going to accumulate, okay, I need to put my parameters in, number of fixed trials was four, probability of a success, in this case it was um, an inaccurate gauge, was 0.1. And I want to accumulate from x equals zero all the way up here to x equals one. Okay, so I want to sum up two probabilities basically. But I can do that as an accumulation here. So let's take a look at that on our calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and sneak back to my calculator here and pull it up. Okay, so let me pull up my calculator here. And I'm going to do 1 minus. Now I'm going to go to second distribution here, right above variables. I'm going to toggle down below binomial PDF. And notice that we have option B, which is binomial CDF. Okay, and once again we put in our parameters. I have four fixed trials. The chance of a, an inaccurate gauge was 0.1. That's considered to be a success. And then I want to accumulate from x equals zero, gauges being defective, up to um, x equals one, gauge being defective. Okay, and then we're gonna get the same result that we had earlier by using our calculator as well. So the calculator functions are very nifty. They're very handy. But one word of caution about calculator syntax, don't put an answer, to, especially on a free response section, multiple choice you can do whatever you want, okay? I'm not going to look at your work, the AP graders won't look at your work, but you can't just use calculator syntax when writing a free response question, okay? You have to assume that the person grading this does not know anything about the content, so you need to convey what you know about this so you can convince them that you understand this without just grabbing answers out of the calculator. They won't give you any credit for calculator syntax, but they will give you credit for defining the, uh, de defining the random variable, defining the probability distribution, defining the probability statement, and then cut to the chase and use the, the calculator syntax to help you with that. But you need to have a clear understanding of what's going on and how you define these things. So uh, make sure that you just don't uh, take advantage of using the calculator and then, and then you stop there. So, uh, so let's go on to the next slide here. Okay. Now I've got another problem here and I'm going to use my calculator in, in the aid of this, but I do want to define everything that I normally would in terms of uh, uh, 
the random variable, the distribution and probability. So in the next example, it says a genetic trait of one family manifests itself in 25% of the offspring. If eight offspring are randomly selected, find the probability that the trait will appear in exactly three of them. Okay, so this is a binomial distribution because we do have a probability of success and a probability of failure. We do have a fixed number of trials, eight. Okay, and we also um, know that these probabilities are independent of one another, or at least we assume that, and those probabilities are not going to change over time. So uh, uh, we're going to define this first of all. We're, let's begin with the definition of our random variable. Okay, so I want to um, define my random variable x here. Okay, um, so we want the probability that the trait will appear in exactly three of them. So we want x to be the number um, of times um, the trait appears. Okay. Now, um, we know that x, okay, once I've defined my random variable, we know that x has a binomial distribution. Okay, this particular binomial distribution has the following parameters. The number of fixed trials we're looking at in this particular problem is eight. And the probability of the success that the trait manifests itself here is 0.25. Okay, so once I've defined my random variable, once I've defined my probability or my uh, my distribution here, the next thing that I want to do is I want to define my probability statement. And in this case, I want the probability that in these eight individuals, the trait manifests itself in exactly three people. So I want the probability that my random variable x, the number of times the trait appears um, in this fixed number of eight, is exactly equal to three. Okay. Now, we can work this a long way using um, um, the binomial formula, or we can now just cut to the chase and use our calculator syntax at this point. Because we want an exact number of successes here, this becomes a binomial PDF. So we're going to take a look at this in, um, on our calculator. So this is a binomial probability distribution function. Okay, we have to put in uh, three things here, our two parameters. Okay, we've got n here first. Number of fixed trials is eight. Probability of success is 0.25. And then I want the number of successes uh, in my probability statement, which is three. Okay, so once again, don't forget the order that you need to put this in, n comma p comma x, okay, where x represents the number of successes. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and evaluate that now on our calculator. So I'm going to uh, jump to my calculator here real quick. So um, let me change over to my calculator. And um, I'm going to go ahead and clear my home screen here. Let's go to second distribution. Okay, I'm going to toggle up because binomial PDF is up on the second screen here. So I'm going to choose binomial PDF. Okay, once again, I put the number of fixed trials, which is 8. Okay, the probability of a success, which is 0.25. And I want exactly three successes. Okay, so the probability that this trait manifests itself in three, exactly three of the eight individuals is going to be 0.208. Okay, so going back to my PowerPoint here, um, this, this becomes basically a binomial PDF. They went to four places here. The chance that x equals three is binomial PDF, um, a comma 0.25 comma three, which my probability ends up to be 0 0.208. Okay, now the, the next part of this question asks us uh, what's the probability that it manifest, manifests, this trait manifests itself in at least five individuals. Okay, so um, once again, we've defined everything. Um, um, let me go back to my um, definition here. Okay, in, in the last question here, I want, to, um, I want to define the probability of x being greater than or equal to five. Okay, so now we need to be very careful. Uh, remember, when we do a binomial CDF, which is an accumulation here, remember this is the probability that we could have exactly um, five or we could have exactly six or we could have exactly seven or we could have exactly eight 
Okay, so I would either have to do four individual probabilities or, or do Okay, so going back to the, the, um, the screen up here, uh, once again, we cannot do a binomial CDF where we accumulate from five to eight. So we're gonna have to change it to the complement of this event. The probability that X is greater than or equal to five is one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to four. Okay, now I don't have to include any values between four and five since this is a discrete uh, distribution here. There's no possible values between four and five because we, we're talking about individuals and not fractions of things here. So um, this, uh, this becomes one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to four. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. I'll erase this. Let's go to the answer here. And we're gonna do um, one minus a binomial CDF of eight comma 0.25 comma four. And the chance that this trait manifests itself in at least five individuals, uh, five or more individuals of the eight is equal to 0 0.0273. Um, so not a very likely chance that this trait could happen in, in five or more individuals of the, of the, of the eight um, that represents a fixed number of trials that we have in this particular problem. So once again, we make use of the binomial PDF key, probability distribution function, and the binomial CDF, the cumulative distribution function. Very powerful uh, statements on your calculator that will sum up binomial probabilities. Okay, now let's go to the next example here. In our next example, it says in a certain county, 30% of the voters are Republicans. If 10 voters are selected at random, find the probability that no more than six of them will be Republicans. Okay, so first of all, I have to ask myself, and obviously we're talking about binomial distributions, but I want to make sure that this qualifies as a binomial distribution. So let's take a look at the properties here. Okay, do we have a chance of success and do we have a chance of failure? We basically have two outcomes here. Either a person is a Republican or they're not a Republican. And each of these has a probability attached to it and they're independent from one another. So uh, do we have now a number of fixed trials? Okay, we're looking at uh, how many individuals out of 10. So we do have a fixed number of trials, which is 10. So, um, and, and because our probabilities are stable, they don't change. Um, uh, for each trial, then this becomes a binomial distribution. So let's go ahead and define this now. Um, let's define this probability question here. And um, I'm going to begin with one right here. Um, we're going to let our random variable x be um, the number of Republicans. Okay, so in, in statement two, I'm going to define the distribution. The random variable x is binomially distributed, okay? The parameter, number of fixed trials here is 10. And the probability of the success, the chance of being a Republican is, is 30%. Okay, and in step three, I'm gonna define my probability statement. Okay, I wanna find the probability that no more than six of them will be Republicans. So I want the probability that X here is less than or equal to six. Okay, if I want no more than six, okay, I don't want seven, eight, nine, or 10, so I want the chance that X is less than or equal to six. Okay, so this really is a pretty straightforward probability here because we're accumulating everything all the way from uh, zero successes up to six successes. So this becomes a binomial CDF, okay, and we're going to uh, put in our parameters now. Uh, the number of fixed trials here is 10. The probability of the success is 0.3. And I want to accumulate uh, the value of x, the random variable number of Republicans, from zero all the way up to six. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at that on our calculator now. So I want the binomial CDF, um, fixed number of trials, 10, probability of success, 0.3, accumulate number of successes up to six. Okay, so let's go second distribution. Okay, I'm gonna go toggle up to option B, binomial CDF. We have 10 fixed trials. We have probability of success 0.3, and I want to accumulate the number of successes from zero 
up to six. Okay, and when we do that, okay, so once again, uh, when we do that, we get a probability of 0.989. So, um, once again, going back to our problem statement, um, if 10 voters are selected at random, the probability that no more than six of them will be Republicans is a pretty high probability. Okay, now I want to take a look at the binomial formulas for the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution. Now for every binomial distribution, the mean value of a binomial distribution is equal to uh, n, the number of fixed trials, times p, the probability of a success. Okay, and sometimes you'll see the mean value also written as, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this here, I've got some things from earlier. But um, the mean value is also represented by the expected value of x, okay? So the expected value basically is the same thing as the mean value. Um, those two terms can be used interchangeably. But we take number of tri fixed trials times probability of success to get the mean uh, value of any binomial distribution. And the standard deviation for a binomial distribution is equal to the square root of number of fixed trials times the probability of success, times the probability of failure. Um, I'll be writing that as the square root of NPQ. Remember, Q is just equal to the complement of P. Okay, if P represents a success, Q represents a failure. The chance of a failure is just one minus the probability of a success. So um, those are formulas that are important to know and understand the mean of a binomial distribution and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution. Okay, so let's go back to our previous problem. Okay, we're talking about the Republicans. 30, there's a 30% chance that a randomly selected individual is a Republican. We have 10 fixed trials here. How many Republicans would you expect in 10 randomly selected voters? Okay, what is the standard deviation for this distribution? Okay, so let's begin here with the, um, the mean value. Okay, so I want to begin with the mean value here or the expected value. Okay, the expected number of voters, where x represents our random variable number of Republicans. The expected value of x, or the mean of x, because this is binomial. Okay, remember we described x as being a binomial distribution with parameter n equals 10 and p equals 0.3. The mean of this binomial distribution is equal to n times p. So, we're going to take the number of fixed trials, 10 times the probability of a success, which is 0.3. So out of 10 Republicans, we would expect, this expected value, mean value, would be three. We would expect to have three Republicans. Now, the standard deviation for this particular distribution is equal to the square root of NPQ. So I'm gonna take the root of the number of fixed trials, 10, uh, times my probability of success, 0.3, times my probability of failure, which is 0.7. Okay, that's not being a Republican. Okay, so if I take 0.3 times 0.7, I get 0.21, and if I take 0.21 times 10, I get 2.1. So the uh, standard deviation of the, of the distribution, this particular distribution above here, uh, would be the root of uh, 2.1. Okay, and if I calculate that to three places, and let's, take, let's go ahead and look at the answer here. Um, once again, uh, the mean number of voters is three Republicans, and the standard deviation uh, of, of voters would be 1.45 Republicans. So uh, once again, we have the mean of our distribution, we have the standard deviation of our distribution, uh, with this distribution being defined as a binomial distribution. So this concludes our lesson on binomial distributions. Uh, we're going to be working in class on um, a binomial distribution activity, uh, which we will work together with our calculators as well. And I want to take a look at the shapes of different binomial distributions with uh, different probabilities of success and failure and, and, and talk about how the shape changes. So um, once again, um, we looked at a special type of a discrete distribution, the binomial distribution. And we're going to begin the next day uh, with the study of geometric distributions.